Welcome to another episode, actually number three for season three, Arizona Real Estate Showcase. I'm your host, Jason Grandin, with the Grandin Group, Arizona's number one brother and sister real estate team powered by Corcoran Platinum Living. Hope you guys are having a spectacular week. Can you believe we are on the final day of the year, or of the month of the year, the final day of the month. We are fully one month through 2021. And what a ride it's been. Again, Arizona Real Estate Showcase. We talk about lifestyle in Arizona, things that are going on here. We do not do politics. So kick back and enjoy the show because it should be stress-free. Although I will get you riled up about some things, but non-political. So anyway, so hey, first of all, I wanted to thank you guys again uh, for making this a top-rated podcast. Uh, Every week we're getting more and more listeners. I'm getting more and more mail. Um, it's great. And plus, uh, I've got more and more people coming here to buy. Arizona is still one of the hot markets in the country. In fact, it's one of the hottest. It was between here and Austin in one of the magazines. And they claim that the only reason Arizona was not number one in Austin was, was because of the age of the homes. And they came up with some uh, nonsense like that. But I got to tell you, we've got over 250, 300 people a day moving here to Maricopa County. And the market's nuts. So, you know, here's the frustration that's going to set in, especially with you renters. Um, you're priced out of the market. I mean, if you're looking for just kind of an inexpensive rental, it's just not going to happen. Um, even the quote-unquote dumps are expensive. And then if it's got any sort of personality at all, it's just it's getting ridiculous. Rule of thumb when we, you know, we own instantrenters.com. So the rule of thumb has always been kind of a dollar a square foot for the rentals. And right now we're seeing uh, anywhere from a buck fifty to three dollars a foot on rentals. Um, it's just crazy. There's just not enough homes here. So, with that said, if you are a renter, you might want to consider trying to buy. Yes, it's difficult to buy right now because it's a rat race. You're paying top of the market, but with that said, you're getting these incredible interest rates. And uh, you'd be amazed. I know, uh, you know, we get a lot of people, and I mean a lot, that call and they're like, oh, I can't buy this year because of my credit. And you'd be amazed how many people actually are able to buy. You don't need to have a 750 credit score to buy a house. In fact, we've had some that are in the uh, high fives. So it's just kind of this mindset that you put into it if you're going to buy or not. And if you want to, it's easy to put a roadmap together. We've got some great lenders that will actually sit down with you, no charge, and they'll draw a roadmap. So if you're not able to buy at this present mo- uh, present moment, they will draw you a roadmap to get you to where you need to be. Hey, and the other thing that's a little bit of a misconception is your down payment. With everything going on out here and the house is moving more out west and even out east and stuff like that, there's plans called like, um, um, like HUD Homes. And there's the um, agricultural loans and different types of loans like that, which your lender will talk to you about. Talk to them about it. Some of those don't even require a down payment. For you veterans, and, and we have a ton of veterans, and there's a ton of veterans out there, use what the government has given you. You are entitled to use your VA loan. Use it. It's a great, great program. Uh, we can get a lot of your costs covered, and we have a good time doing it in the process. So... Today, let's get started. Uh, the, our last episode, we kind of touched base on um, the escalation clause and how the pros and cons on how you know, you're going to run into some legal issues when you do that when you're trying to buy a home. And uh, as you know, the, um, the home buying, the home selling is fantastic out here, especially when you use companies like the Granning Group, that's us, and we have an extensive marketing program. Marketing is key to sell in a house, and quite honestly, it's key to purchase in a house as well. That name recognition and stuff really helps. So we also went into agent behavior. So I'm going to touch real quick on agent behaviors. And this was, um, I have a whole other list of things we're going to go over today, but I have to touch on this real quick. So as I'm scrolling through social media, Facebook and Twitter, which I hate them both, but we use them for advertising, um, we, uh, I come across this one website. It's like Real Estate Mastermind. And if you're a regular person and you're dependent on realtors and you just happen to come across this site, while there are some great people on there, there's some really great people, there are some that are absolute morons. And this this handles the entire country. They ask questions on there, which I think is great. If you're a realtor and you don't know the answer and you're not getting the broker support you need or whatever, post it out there, ask a question. 
But there's some things that are just ridiculous. So there's one realtor with a degree from Harvard. Josh is his name. I won't give you his last name. Posted a question that he had a house that was listed for, uh, let's just say, three hundred or 250000 And he got an offer for 180000 on it. And he was insulted by this. And he was like, oh, do it. He posed the question, should he give it to a, uh, should he even present it? How would you handle this other insulting realtor? Listen, here's the deal. If you're a seller, we're selling your house and we get an offer. Your house is $500,000 and we get an offer that's $300,000. Okay, we can sit there and laugh about it and do whatever. Number one rule in realtors, we don't make the decisions, you do. We're supposed to bring that offer to you present it and you and hey the seller and many times this has happened you're asking 300,000 for a house we bring an offer for 200 and uh, it just came on the market and it's obviously not a hot market like it is now but it's a hot market there's many times the seller will say yep let's take it let's do it it's never up to the realtor so if you run into this situation you have a realtor running his mouth on social media asking what to do with it as a seller you should sit there and say you know what just bring me the offer present it and leave people out of my business that's the number one thing. The fact that they even have to ask stupid things like that, and there are such things as stupid questions when it comes up to that, is absolutely ridiculous. Um, yes, frustrating. You know, we all get it and stuff. But the fact of the matter is, is if you get an offer on your house, bring it over to the uh, seller. Many times, people are just testing the water. So, okay, Mr. Buyer is trying to buy your house that you have priced at 300000 for 200,000. So he brings you an offer. You counter it back at let's say 285. Bam, he does it. Or maybe he counters back at 275. It's a little bit of a negotiation. Both realtors need to discuss as to why you're asking those prices. That's their job. But other than that, many, many times you can get that deal done. So I just had to bring that up because it was I, and I even emailed the guy this morning and told him he was the inspiration of this podcast. Because he uh, did not not want to present an offer that was $100,000 less. It's not up to him. It's never up to the realtors. It is always up to the um, sellers. And, of course, the buyers. And, hey, many buyers, like we discussed in the last episode on the escalation clauses, don't want their name blasted out there. So, you know, if you do an escalation clause, like we mentioned, you have to show the contract that it had the highest offer. And, you know, and, and not all, but some happen to leave the entire contract open with names, numbers, and everything else. So you start posing some issues there. Okay, so today's episode... Oh, the other thing too is spring training. So today is January 31st. It's a Sunday. And we had some great storms last week. It is absolutely beautiful outside. Shorts and sweater weather. Perfect day for hiking, walking, trails, whatever it is. It's an absolutely beautiful day. And so that leads me into what we talked about last week as well with spring training. Now, everyone knows I'm not a huge baseball fan, but I do, and very fortunately and very thankful for this, we handle many of the baseball players that come in town for spring training. We find them housing and stuff like that. So we have a fair amount of them. Actually, we have a ton of them. And um, I get to know these young kids, and you know they're making $20 million and stuff like that. It's great. And so we find them houses. We become friends with them. And again, I don't know about baseball, so I'm not like starstruck with them, and I think they kind of like it. But anyway, so this week, the uh, our local government officials who have all become just, not all, but most of them have just become absolute clowns, sent a letter out to the commissioner of the Major League Baseball saying they wanted to postpone spring training because of this uh, pandemic. Well, again, we're not going to discuss our views on the pandemic and all this stuff, but the, and we know it's real. But we also know it's got a high survival rate. We also know we've been dealing with it for a year. We also know it's time to get back to normal life. We also know that each and every one of us is responsible enough to take care of ourselves. So if we're not feeling good, we stay home. Uh, we wash our hands, stuff like that. And I'm not a mask fan, but what, whatever. So uh, which we'll bring it to another point. So anyway, so if you guys are interested in spring training, I encourage you to send a letter to the commissioner and tell them do not postpone spring training. Yes, if you have to limit your seats, whatever, that's fine. But we've got to get this stuff rocking and rolling. That's why people love Arizona. It's one of the major things from January through April. People love to come to Arizona, spend money in our hotels, at the restaurants, in our businesses to 
come out here and watch spring training in 65 degree weather. It's absolutely awesome. It's beautiful. So it's very important that if you guys are interested in that, whether you like baseball or not, send a letter to the commissioner and tell them do not give in to these local officials. Who, by the way, I worked on some of the campaigns this year. Their information is absolutely incorrect, and everything they're doing is for them. So they're either getting paid or there's something that's been promised to them, and they're coming up with these horrible decisions that are actually hindering us Arizonans. That stuff's going to come to an end. Again, we don't get into politics. But maybe we should start a show. So if any of you listeners out there are really politically savvy, come on, call me up and let's, we'll start a show. We can come up with something good and we'll uh, really bring awareness to it. Okay, so the next thing is, um, you know, we're, we're talking about event season real quick, is the Airbnb, the hotels and restaurants and all that stuff. Okay, so the Airbnbs are absolutely awesome. There's some great homes out here. Some people have done absolutely amazing jobs on their homes, fixing them up, getting them ready for you to be here for one day to a week or whatever. There's some gorgeous homes. We're having some issues. Some of the city officials in Phoenix, Paradise Valley, Scottsdale, all over the state are trying to put an end to the Airbnb. So already in many communities, such as like, let's just say DC Ranch or Greyhawk, there's limits on on Airbnb. So they have, you have to be there like a minimum three months, six months and so forth. So you cannot rent this out investors, I get calls from you and stuff, and you're telling me, hey, I want a house in this area. If you're doing an Airbnb, which is a day-to-day type rental, it's not going to happen. And and we don't want to sell you a house that's not going to generate you that income. So we have to look at places with non-HOAs. That is not necessarily going to help here in the near future if it doesn't get stopped. If these city councils and stuff start passing different ordinance, Even an HOA Airbnb could be in danger. So these are things we want to be careful of. Long-term rentals, great. Long-term furnished rentals, fine. Short-term furnished rentals, and when I say short-term, minimum 30 days, you can still make some pretty good money on those. Again, it's the Airbnb that's kind of being affected. And, And also, many of the neighbors now are starting to kind of go against them. And we've had many assisted living homes that are getting a lot of feedback from HOAs. Um... And that's, and that's illegal, but they're still giving them a hard time. So anyways, if this is a route you're going, if you're going to rent Airbnb, there's great companies go online and rent a place. But if you're thinking about investing, call us up. Let's discuss all the options. It is incredibly important that whether you're buying an Airbnb or a house for yourself, that you guys are getting all the information that you need. Um, we had a couple people, and this is, this is one thing that we take pride in at the Grandin Group, is that... We had a client that bought a house. This was uh, five months ago, and they were they were excited. They love this house. They paid like five twenty five for it, and uh, they get moved in. And then he got a job transfer, and it was like a five year assignment. So we we discussed the possibility: Do you want to rent it, or do you want to just sell it? So um, I pushed for the rental part because it was it's a great rental market here. There's some pros and cons to renting when you're especially if you don't have a property management. But there's uh, some pros and cons to running. But ultimately, they decide to sell it. Get a hold of this. Six months later, they paid five twenty-five. House just went under contract, six seventy. Hundred and twenty thousand dollar profit in five or six months. That is unbelievable. And of course, they're super happy, and um, they'll take off to their deal. House is closing and everything else. So there's some great stories out there. But you have to be informed. Discuss it with your realtors, interview your realtors, because a lot of the agents um, out here are just after the dollar, where there's a ton of great ones out here, including the Grandin Group, my sister and I, um, that really want to make sure that we build a relationship with you. We're not interested in uh, turn and burn. We want to, you know, this is long term, and it's also a life decision for you guys. So anyways, so that kind of leads into the event stuff. Event season out here generally is November through April. Uh, it's a great time to rent houses. So uh, the next thing we wanted to get to. So we talked about your baseball. If you guys get a chance, send it into the commissioner. And then Airbnbs, just know that uh, city councils, hotels, and other people are fighting against having those. And it's an uphill battle for the owners of Airbnbs. But I think we're going to have, I, I think it'll turn out all right. So our next thing is, one of the biggest things we uh, discuss, especially in today's world with everything 
where uh, false is true and true is false, all that kind of nonsense, is protection. So what is the best kind of protection? So when you buy a house, having a security system, is it's, it's good to have those. And many of the houses, especially in the HOAs, are now included in their HOA fees as part of a monthly plan. But the different types of protections in Arizona, um, it, 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 everybody's, everybody's into something. Fitness is really big out here. So karate. So we'll, we're going to talk about three or four different little things here real quick. But karate. So uh, for those of you that don't know, I spent probably 16 years of my life studying Kempo, karate. I did it from when I was young until I got into college. And then I did a little bit in college. And then I was on the... Um, I, I did intramural gymnastics. So anyways, karate is a great way, strength training. It's a good way to build confidence. We recently did an interview with East Valley Cobb Maga, and they had this one gal in there. She's actually the owner of it now. Uh, she married the owner, and so she's the owner. And anyways, she, um, you know, petite lady, super nice, and she was at a soccer game. Now, to uh, go ahead, to back up on the story a little bit, she was just kind of one of these that worked in the office, and uh, she had a really like really great job. Anyway, she worked in the office and stuff like that. So apparently, she uh, started working out here at this Kav Maga, it's, and it's Israel, Israeli fighting, and it's awesome. These guys are tough, and it's supposed to be to boost the kind of the person that's kind of real timid or quiet. You should see these people come out of their shell. So, anyways, she's telling us a story about how. You know, she was just feeling kind of tired and weak, always working all the time. So she gets into this, really builds her confidence, and you could just see a whole different aura on her personality. So she's at a Phoenix Rising game, which is the local soccer team out here, and she's got a couple drinks in one hand, some food in the other, and she's walking up the stairs, and some guy slaps her on the rear. She turns around with the drinks in her hand and just kicks him flat square in the chest and knocks him down the deal. And so... You know, I, so I'm all for protection, and I think this helps kids. It helps self-esteem. It helps bodies. It helps your inner spirit, everything else. So you might want to consider doing some of these uh, different, you know, karate, Kav Maga type things. So this gal here that owns this place, uh, I mean, you look at her and you'd be like, oh, you know, nothing. But she's got the most confidence. Her husband's got a ton of confidence. And it's really great watching these people that normally didn't have much going all of a sudden are standing up proud, tough, and you wouldn't even want to mess with them. So if you need a list of schools, I'm going to actually post some here. If you need a list of schools in different disciplines, I highly recommend doing this type of protection, especially in today's day and age. Not that you're going to go out and pick a fight, but it's a good idea to know that if you know somebody pushes you, you're able to stand your ground, push back, and protect your home. Somebody comes on your property, there's so many rules going on and debates about guns and stuff that, um, you know, you have to be able to stand your ground. So sometimes a, uh, you know, chop to the face is a little better than a bullet or a knife. So, which brings me to our next one. Arizona is home to Taser. Great company out here, self-defense weapons. Um, These are great tools to have. You put them on your belt. You know, give someone 25,000 volts if they, um, you know, if you feel like you're in harm. So Taser has been a great company for Arizona. It's really um, put Scottsdale specifically on the map as to companies that, why people love to come to Arizona. And at some point in the near future, we'll have them on our show, The Lockbox. So the Taser, you can hook to your belt, you can keep in your pocket, keep in your purse, ladies. And, you know, it, it, it's still, you know, you're out and about, you're walking to your car at night. You have to be aware of your surrounding. Same thing, working in, you know, a lot of people right now are starting to buy houses in the rural areas. And, um, you know, sometimes your neighbor is not that close. Somebody comes knocking at your door looking to harm you. You need to be ready for this stuff. Now, I am not trying to scare you from moving to Arizona. I'm just giving you a realistic view of some of the things that happen. And sometimes if you haven't practiced karate, you don't own a gun, but you have a taser there and somebody comes and you're feeling... Like you're being harmed, zap them with 25,000 volts. It's the way to go. But with that said, Taser's a great company. They've got other types of tools out here as well. Then you have guns. So, okay, we have some great, great gun ranges in Arizona here. 
We've got C2. We've got the Scottsdale Gun Club. We've got Ben Avery. Personally, I, I know there's a big debate about gun, and we're not getting into politics on it. Personally, I think everybody with a good mental capacity should learn how to use a gun. I think kids should learn how to use a gun. I think they should know what it does, how it works, how to break them apart, put them together, and use them. They have to know what it's for. There's so much stuff on TV these days, holding your gun sideways and this and that. It just gives a false sense of reality. Guns are a great source of protection out here. Uh, one thing you'll find when you buy a house here, many places, many people have gun safes. And, and they collect them. I mean, half the times they don't even have bullets. They just collect these cool-looking guns. And it's, it's a hobby for a lot of people in Arizona. Doesn't mean you're going to use them. It's just a good source of protection. But if you are going to have guns, I definitely, definitely recommend that you have a safe place to store them. Keep them away from any kids and stuff like that. And you also, also have training. So our broker, Jay Macklin, is a gun expert, but he's also always training. So there's not uh, a week or two that goes by where he's not out the range or with a coach learning new techniques. Owning a gun is like anything else. It's like owning a house. you got to maintain your mind and, and maintain your um, you know, composure with the guns. You never want to pull a gun on anybody. The only time you want to pull it is if you're going to have to use it, and hopefully that never happens. So, And the gun owners out here in Arizona, 99.9% .9 are very, very responsible. So there's other types of protections, too. Again, I, I do recommend, um, depending on the areas you're in, but the security systems are great. We have the new ring bell on the house, and you connect it to uh, several cameras around the house. So you can actually, from your phone, watch the front door, the back door, the pool area, everything else. The ring has absolutely changed the way protection goes when owning the house. And then, of course, you have Simply Save. And uh, you've had that company that just about bit it because they got involved in politics. Instead of just selling their products, they started bashing on one side or the other, and uh, they took a lot of heat. Now you notice they won't even talk about anything but alarms, which is good as the, the way they should be. Also, they got great commercials. <clears throat> so anyways, so when you guys get ready to purchase a house or rent or sell, protection is a huge thing. The other thing when we get into protection, when you're out there, when us realtors are selling houses, is put your stuff away. So there are many, many people, and I've told this story several times, not necessarily on the show, but there are times that um, we'll do an open house. Now, this is not us. These are just stories. You'll have a nice couple come in, and you'll be like, oh, this is a great-looking couple. You, you, you kind of just feel them, and they're like, oh, hey, we're interested in your house. The guy might stay downstairs and talk to you. And the other person will go upstairs and they'll rummage through your uh, medicine cabinet and take like any sort of pills or anything you might have, medications. Sometimes you could leave a million dollars sitting right there on the counter. They wouldn't touch it. They're after the pills. So, you know, protection goes farther than just the physical items of guns and tasers and, uh, and you know, and karate and all that other stuff. You just got to have some self-awareness. So if you guys are going to have people into your home, it's generally... Really good to have your you know, personal stuff put away, locked up, any expensive jewelry, anything that can easily be palmed, um, and then any medication. They love the medication, and I would venture to say a majority of the time they'd rather have that than any sort of cash. Also, it's a pretty good idea to have more than one person sit in an open house, especially if you've got a really busy one uh, and you have clients that are still living in, in the house. Um, you you know you want people to have their space and look around and stuff, but on the flip side of it, we've got to protect your interest. So, just kind of something to think about before you list your house with an agent. And if you're going to let them do an open house, if you, you just say, Mister Agent, Mrs. Agent, if you're going to do an open house, who's going to be here with you? Now, title companies, mortgage companies, they all love to come sit open houses because it's a way for them to meet clients. So. If you have a house where the, you're still living in it and you're going to sell it and they're going to do an open house, highly recommended there's uh, two or three people doing that open house with them just to keep an eye on your stuff for protection. So, anyway, so that's up uh, on today's episode. I, I, you know, I, honestly, I cannot believe we are um, three episodes in on season three. Like I promised, I'm going to keep these going more often. We won't let two weeks go by without any uh, podcasts. 
Hey, please send me any uh, show ideas, any information you have, your questions. I'll answer them all on air. We'll, and it doesn't matter what they are. We'll put them up and answer them. We're still working on bringing this thing live as well. We do have the lockbox episodes, uh, which talk about Arizona, and we also have the, you know obviously this podcast, which we will have it, so you'll be able to watch my face while I'm talking, so you can listen or you can watch. It won't matter. Anyways, I'm Jason Grandin with the Grandin Group, Arizona's number one brother and sister real estate team powered by Corcoran Platinum Living. For those of you that don't know, Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank uh, started Corcoran Group in New York. Uh, we are worldwide. Our marketing programs are incredible. Our team is awesome. I mean, there's just we're one of the top three teams in the state, we're, and it's um, it's great. Also, we are really busy up in the north part of the valley, like Camp Verde, Prescott, Prescott Valley, Cornville. We've got a great agent, Colt Cody, that works up there with us. So anything you all need, for those of you that are out in the outskirts there, we have you covered. We're a great team. I think you'll love working with us. All right. I'm Jason Grandin. Thanks for listening to another episode of Arizona Real Estate Showcase. We'll be back later this week with some really good topics. You guys have a good one. Have a good week.